Is it gonna be good? Let's take a look. <laughs> Jamin here, make sure you subscribe below so you don't miss anything. Today, I'm gonna to be scrutinizing a competition from Jumpin' Istanbul 2023. This is going to be a challenging one to judge because it's the open Jack and Jill type format. This format is when you put together a leader and a follower to improvise. Now, my critique of these dancers at this level has to be clearly articulated, but also nuanced. Since most of swing dancing is subjective, I primarily judge the dancers by how well they can do the most fundamental aspects of leading and following. I like to call this simply control. However, when the level of control is so high amongst all the dancers, I have to then take in consideration how well they can use the technique with the timing of the music so that their movements look somewhat synchronized to the more pronounced parts of the music, specifically those parts of the music that the audience can appreciate. Now, of course, if all of the dancers have control and timing, I'm only left with looking for the couple who has the it factor. I like to boil the it factor down to the word creativity. I'm excited to take a look at this one. Before we jump in, I just want to give a big shout out to all of the Patreon supporters and the Street Smart Swing members. I've just uploaded a new course highlighting specifically how you can develop your style in swing dancing. So if you want to access that and my entire catalog, check out the link in the description. Now it's time to be judgmental.
that was a real surprise. I must start off by just saying congratulations to every participant for putting yourself out there. Every time you put yourself out there, you're literally telling the audience that you are unafraid of what they may be thinking of your dancing at that moment. And in doing so, you are also planting seeds of inspiration for new generations of dancers. So keep going, guys. Now, of course, every time I judge a competition, I must preface by saying everything is subjective until there is a clear standard by which everyone is being judged. For me, the standard all boils down to control, timing, and creativity. I got to say up front that none of the couples were able to do all three of those qualities to me in this competition. So there is no first place, but I'm still going to give you guys my ranking based on what happened. First off, I've got to give a shout out to the dancers I feel who had the best looking swing outs in this competition. Look at this couple. I just appreciate how the leader is complimenting the follower's style by just highlighting the lines in their movement. It's just really beautiful. That really stood out to me. Now, of course, I've got to speak to everyone because everybody knew how the technique worked. So, you know, I didn't see any dancers having any pain. So everybody was able to accomplish at minimum the control aspect of what I was looking for. However, there was one couple that stood out to me that's worth mentioning who I felt was the probably my third place winner. I loved almost everything about this couple. And they're right here. Now, I mostly liked how well they matched each other's visual tone. I wish I could have seen a little bit more of the follower doing swing outs so I could see just more of her personality. And I know it's very difficult for followers if leaders don't give that opportunity. But still, overall, they had authentic energy and even pulsated the swing note in the same way. That was really cool. Now the couple that I feel who were second place really should have been my first place winner. I say this even though I didn't really love their style. Now they demonstrated the control of the technique by doing a style of Lindy Hop that is more stretchy and heavy, strevy. They're kind of floating through the movements with an enormous amount of elasticity when they move toward and away from each other. This style is very reminiscent of a style that's been proliferated by dancers like Sky and Frida and a few others who do this. Because it has become so popular with just so many people and so few people have done anything with it uniquely in order to differentiate themselves from Sky and Frida, I've grown to loathe this style when I see it. Now, this is just my opinion. Unless new dancers use this stretchy style in a unique way, people will think the only way you can do this style is to imitate the specific countenance of Sky and Frida, which is unfortunate. I would rather see dancers take more creative risk using this elastic approach and fail rather than just nail everything considered artistically acceptable right now. Now, regardless of how well they did their style, I still have to acknowledge how well they did what they did, even though I felt it was too safe. Now, one of the main things I really loved about this couple was their timing with the more pronounced parts of the music. The little footwork and the shoulder shimmies are just really noticeable when you contrast those points with their basic movements. For me, they had all of the ingredients I look for in a second place winner. I just wish they gave me a little bit more creativity when using this ubiquitous stretchy style. Now their second set really gets to the heart of what leading and following is all about and that's where I felt the most disappointed even though I liked what they did together for their first set. Let me just say this, there should never be a point when dancers stop listening to each other. This goes for everyone, not just this couple. This applies to leaders not listening to followers and followers not listening to leaders. If you are doing a partner competition, you both have to prioritize your primary role, which is to dance together. For example, in this couple's second part, they disconnect by accident and the leader clearly offered his hand. But instead of immediately grabbing the hand to be ready for the next suggestion, the follower 
kind of in a way forced the leader to start doing solo jazz with her. This made the leader abdicate his main role and start following while the follower started leading what was going to happen next. This can cause so much confusion if the assumption isn't to reconnect as fast as possible in order to do the main competition format. I'm not saying solo jazz is bad or dancers can't do solo jazz in a partner competition. What I am saying is we should never do what we want at the expense of our partner. Unfortunately, I felt like their real second set had so much more potential, but ended up not being seen. Even with all of this and my griping, their first set was my favorite in the whole competition. Now, my first place couple were first in my eyes because they did what my third place couple should have done, which was more swing outs, and they did what my second place couple should have done in the second set, which was to dance more together. Let's take a look at my first place couple. When you watch this couple dance, you can see the leader solely focused on moving his partner. And the follower is focused on him more than the audience. It looks like a real genuine conversation. The follower's movements look so authentic and elegant because she's focused on echoing the same energy suggested by her partner. They both are mirroring each other's excitement with hand gestures and smiles. It just, it looks like they care more about each other than just getting attention from the audience. Now, one thing that I feel that they lacked, which was also what my second place couple lacked, was a really unique moment. I'm talking about that creative moment that everybody knows when they see it that distinguishes them as the first place winner from everyone else. Now, if that moment isn't clearly expressed, you may win the judges in a competition, but you may somewhat lose the audience. And you can usually know that by just getting some type of mediocre applause and you never want that to happen. You literally wanna go in there have an authentic moment with your partner and still create a moment that makes the audience lose their minds. That's hard to do, but that's really what's expected in my book for the first place winner. Dancers just have to step up their creative game. So that was my first place winner. Man, what did you guys think about this competition? Who did you like and why? Let me know in the comments section below. And again, if you wanna check out my new course on how to discover your creativity and change your style, if you don't like your current style, check out the link in the description. If I don't see your comments below, hopefully I get a chance to see some of you in my class online. Take care.